Hey. Apparently I'm supposed to explain to you what this stuff does. Uh, so the first part, I wrote some terminal stuff to show in the back end of what we did, <coughs> uh, which includes a genetic algorithm uh, framework and a, uh, a byte coding framework. So you can see the genetic algorithm. Uh, I have a genetic algorithm demo written up. Uh, it kind of blows up the screen, but you can still see the basic concept, which is that the score goes up over time. <laughs> um, you can kind of see the score creeps across the screen as the strings explode out of proportion. Um, you can see there ended at like 9,000. Right down the middle of the screen, you score 9,500. But and I guess in this case, they're all the same. <coughs> but usually, the scores down the bottom of the screen are lower than the top, and that's because of the selection process. Um, I also have the uh, byte code demo. Uh, which basically just demonstrates if it'll run uh, the postfix expression engine that I wrote to help the genetic algorithm run the uh, um, run the scrape server. I guess it's not going to run, um, but you can see that some other time. It's really not all that important. Um, okay. So one of the other things I had to do was figure out how to run a script server, which I run a lot on a virtual machine. Um, let's see. So go to the workspace and then. Okay, um, so the Scrap server has two parts to it. You have the main engine that runs the whole thing, and then you have the command line interface. In order to be able to run both of them at the same time uh, from a terminal, you have to run one in the background, which I do the, uh, the main one. And then, to wait for the one to start and then you can execute the second one. I've already typed in the second one but I'll just sit here and wait for it. While it's starting up I can also launch the scripts um, client. Our actual client doesn't work completely right now but <clears throat> it's still there. Um, we were able to get the uh, the creep spawning process working um, by the end of the project, but uh, there is a bug in the code that stopped the creeps from moving, um, and we weren't able to figure that out in time. So that's where we've gotten stuck. Uh, but I can show you if you watch the console, you can see the code is working in the background. It's just the a uh, game interface is choosing not to uh, not to acknowledge it. Um, okay, it's getting started. And it takes a while because the node package manager has to go through and double check all the dependencies every single time that you run it. And now it should be good to go, so then we'll start the second one. Uh, so, for those of you that don't know what Screeps is, Screeps is a uh, massive multiplayer online role, uh, game where everything in the game is controlled through JavaScript. Uh, 
uh, everything, uh, like even down to um, everything. You can log in remotely with robots. There's no anti-bot protection, though there is some to help against like uh, malicious bots, but normal bots are fine. All right, so if I go back here, I should be able to host, connect. Oh, this is going to crash again, isn't it? Um, we'll just, we're going to respawn. Um, so down here in the bottom we have the code. I actually wrote it in visual code, but uh, it has to be in here in order for it to work. So you get the main, this is the one that runs every single tick of the game cycle, and then it relies on these other things. So you have the byte code, this is what processes the bytes that are generated by the genome sequences for the populations. Uh, and these are the classes that represent all of the different the, the scrapes in here. We only had one of them built because I was just hoping to get the resource mining done, but I didn't end up getting that far. This is the actual genetic algorithm code. Um, you have the, the populant class here, which represents one person in the, in the population. And then you have the population class that holds the entire sample. Um, yeah, and then these contain the algorithms for combining the genome sequences and generating new ones. Uh, so if I place a spawn point down, you'll see I name it the default. And it will automatically start generating scrapes, and that's because that's what the code says to do. You can see the code on here. Give it a second. Oh, no, the script execution timed out because this is the bug we were working on right at the beginning. And that's going to freeze the game and crash it. Um, but I can fix that. It doesn't take much. I just have to restart the entire game. Which involves going into task. <sighs> I'm finding it. This is not found. Okay. Kill. Oh, one, three, one, three. There. Um, the API for this is extremely deep, like I only brushed on the very surface of the features that are available for it just because um, I don't really have time to get all that far into it. It would have been really interesting to take a look at some of the farther stuff, but um, like I said, it's extremely, there's a lot of stuff in here. There's like whole crafting menu and upgrade system and tech trees. And uh, there's actually a whole market that you can trade with other players online through your bots uh, live. Okay, um, let me find the code that sits and waits for it's in here while it's busy do nothing I'll just ignore that for now and then 
commit it with control enter and now we can place a spawn that you can see places a spawn and starts to create new uh, scrapes we go to the console we can see it takes the scrapes in and then attempts to follow the reason the uh, the script that's written in the genome sequence um, but it will always error out with negative four because there's a bug in the code that the scrapes never actually stops buying. Um, I was in the middle of talking with the developer at the time that the hackathon ended. So that's where I'm at. If I scroll up here, you can probably see the actual genome sequences in here somewhere. No, I guess the sequence is too long. Um, but you can see it's attempting to do this the same stuff over and over and over again. Because every tick it will rerun the, the, the genome sequence for 100 ticks and then it will kill the script and create a new one. And it'll do that 20 times and then it'll take the highest score <laughs> And for that population and perform the genetic algorithm you know thing uh, and create a whole new uh, population of better scrapes that should be able to do it better the eventual goal is to combine all of this stuff into um, into one so that everything in the game is actually a genetic algorithm, including like the the spawning uh, controller of determining what should be spawned and when. Um, but that's that's way down the road. Yeah. Uh, and then to speed up the simulation process, I could do this, which is to set the tick rate um, using a, a mod that was installed. When I went through installing MongoDB for the server, uh, which is another thing, the so the server by default actually ran in JSON, which is really slow. But uh, you could find resources online to upgrade it to MongoDB to make the database faster. Uh, so I followed that, and in the process, you installed a bunch of extra apps that gave you more. Uh, versatility when it came to the command line interface and with, with communicating with the server so uh, what this does is I can change the tick rate from uh, to any number in milliseconds so if I do this uh, it'll change it to as you can see on here to uh, 100 milliseconds uh, and then it crashes the game but Normally it doesn't, it just speeds it up so I can perform the simulation a lot faster. Um, and that'll help when it comes to actually doing the generation of populations over and over again. Uh, because, yeah, there, there, I'm, now it's kicked back up again. It must just be struggling to make communicate. Um, but it's getting there. Uh, that's really all I have to talk about. Um, yeah, that's that's what I did. I learned JavaScript, and I did all of this, and this is what I have to show for it. So, yeah, awesome.